The Murderer. That's right, folks, I've seen Season 3, Episode 10 of Stargirl, and now it's time to talk about it. Definitely tread with caution over spoilers here. We've finally gotten reveals on The Murderer. Or have we? Slight tangent here, the CW app calls this episode The Killer, however material I've seen prior to this episode, as well as the website that was listing the episode titles, was calling it The Murderer. The app also has the title for next episode different from that site which posted the episode titles, so I'm wondering if that's going to have any meaning towards the end of the series, but anyways, on with the show. As you may recall, I've had some thoughts this season as to the true identity of the murderer at large. This episode seems to resolve that question, but I don't think it's done so in as clear a cut of way as we may be expected to believe. You see, this episode seems to reveal that, and one last chance to duck out prior to spoilers, that Icicle Sr. is the killer. You know, Cameron's father, the son of the old Ma Kent couple, the one who Mike ran over with the car way back at the end of season one. So I was pretty much certain the killer would turn out to be some returning character from the ISA. My main suspect was Dragon King with a sub-suspect of possibly Brainwave. Those two may not be out of the equation, at least not entirely, so let's think back to the murder of the gambler. Let's also think back to the assault on Starman from a few episodes later. Neither of these attacks seem like they match the power set or abilities of Icicle. Sure, our team is currently under the assumption that the Ultra Humanite was the one who perpetrated these attacks, as they are not yet aware that Icicle is still among us. Either way, why would the Ultra Humanite leave the bodies where they lie? That being said, why would Icicle? I'm still not 100% sold that these attacks were both done by the same perpetrator, and if so, why were they done? That still hasn't been resolved. Why also wait so far into the show to even introduce the Ultra Humanite if that was truly the reveal they always intended? They spent so much time and energy in this episode alone trying to lay out the backstory and abilities of the character that I believe there is much more going on here than meets the eye. Lest we forget, we still have not solved the resurrection issue with Sylvester at this point either. What if the show is doing its best job to introduce plots and characters who fit the mold for the answers we seek only in order to show us that they don't actually fit? fit the way we think they do. The Ultra Humanite was given backstory in such an important way in this episode that I can't help but think that it may both give us answers, but be setting us up for false conclusions at the same time. We were treated to his whole history where we find out he was a scientist, name unknown, who came up against the JSA way in the past by putting his brain into the body of a famous actress named Dolores Winters. Once the JSA discovered this plot, they went after him, only to have Dragon King help the Ultra Humanite by creating a genetically mutated white gorilla who he now inhabits. Or does he? I would be kind of interested to hear or heck even see in flashbacks the battle between the JSA and this smart beast. With the show ending very, very soon, that may end up being the last chance we get to see the original JSA in a team-up. Now, a couple of thoughts spring to mind. My first line of thinking, oddly enough, when hearing this history about Ultra Humanite was Zeke. A few episodes ago, I think it was episode 6 if I remember correctly, there was a somewhat strange scene between Jakeem, Mike, and Zeke, where Zeke spoke with them about his past and his love. I went back to view that scene thinking that he may have dropped a reference to Dolores Winters as one of his past lovers, but to my surprise, he only referred to the Duchess of Liechtenstein and a less interesting daughter of a poor chimney sweep. While this doesn't seem to have any connection on the surface, I'm not entirely sure there is none at all. Perhaps the Duchess of Liechtenstein and the daughter of the chimney sweep were famous roles that Dolores Winters played in a film or a play or something along those lines. I guess what I'm trying to get at here is that, remember, a few episodes back, I mentioned that Zeke had been giving me a slightly odd vibe. Something was a little bit off. And what if he isn't who he pretends to be? I'm not saying that this is a really vetted out thought that I'm having right here, but his nonplussed attitude to the world of super beings and his technological know-how would fit the mold for someone who had the past familiarity with these characters and the ability to place the surveillance devices around town. Now, let's talk about Icicle. Sure, he's back in some manner. At the end of the episode, we see him. He actually does something that I don't want to talk about yet. But let me throw this one at you. Dolores Winters. Winters. Ice. Seems like a bit of a on-the-nose connection, doesn't it? And before you say anything, yes, I am aware that she is a character who plays host to the Ultra Humanite in the comics as well. 
I'm just finding all of these connections fascinating, and I believe they're putting so many of them in here to lead us to false conclusions, as well as to muddy the waters from what's really going on, and to provide a few of the clues that are actually accurate. The story proper started off with a scene featuring the Crocs living their life as changed people, and God, did I have a bad feeling right away when I saw this. That kind of faded towards the middle of the episode, but as soon as I saw them towards the end of the episode kind of recreating those similar walks and runs down the street high-fiving everyone, I knew they were doomed 100%. And I guess I was correct because we did get to see them killed by Icicle by being frozen solid and then basically shattered into nothing. Honestly, this one really hurt me because I really loved their characters. And speaking of which, we also got to see what I feel really shoehorned into this episode was an appearance by Artemis, their daughter. Now, this season started with her storyline of wanting to prove her worth and join the JSA. She even had this whole tryout thing where she battled a bunch of the gambler's goons. But as I mentioned last video, she just seemed to go MIA for the rest of the season. When she did appear on occasion, she was almost never shown where her face was visible. And while she did in this episode, it was only a quick video call and, of course, some photographs on the wall at her home. And I don't know if the actress was off doing something else or what, but she seems to uh, be like a loose thread here. I wonder if they were intending to use her more fully next season, especially with what resulted in this episode with her parents. But once they got the word that the series was ending, they kind of tried to shoot as much of her in this season as they could to give her some sort of closure. And if that's possible, I don't know, it's just a thought right here, but it does feel like she isn't fitting in this show the way the rest of the characters are. But damn, was her parents' death brutal. I could see them coming back if the show were to continue past this season, but since it isn't, probably not going to happen. Maybe Cameron could use his powers to reform them or something along those lines, but it's probably not going to happen in the remaining couple of episodes we have, unless we're shown that this was another twist and that wasn't really them to begin with. I don't know. I think we have also gotten to see every other set of characters on this show sit down in that one room in the Ma Kent mansion. Not complaining, it was just funny to see almost every commercial break coming back with two new characters ringing the doorbell and being escorted into the same damn room. I don't know if they intended it to be like this, and if they did, kudos on them, but it was just so noticeable I couldn't mention it. Oh, and also, Courtney finally talked to Cameron about his father being murdered this episode. Ironically enough, the same one we figure out he isn't dead, but she lied to Cameron and took the blame for killing his father instead of Mike. Now, I've seen some people disliking this. I personally do enjoy it because she's trying to protect Mike, and I do enjoy that. I do like that. She's putting family over her own personal needs to be in Cameron's life. Whether or not that comes back to haunt us, I don't know. But I did actually enjoy the fact that she's not just spilling the beans to him right now. I'm still not positive that half the people in this show right now are who they say they are. They introduced the powers of brain swapping via science this episode, but let's not forget Brainwave either. At this point, we have bodies who may have been responsible for everything that's going on, the murders and all that, but we don't really have any proof whose minds were inside of the bodies at the time this happened. For such a slow burner of a season, we really have so much to still discover, and I am absolutely hooked right now. So yeah, I'm not ruling out Dragon King or Brainwave connections yet, even with all this new info. What if the original ISA is still more operable than we are led to believe? With the show ending, I guess that would actually be a good way to bring everything full circle in this series. But what are your thoughts? I have so many different ideas bouncing around about how all these pieces fit together. I really haven't had time to put them all in place yet. And I'm certain all of those puzzle pieces, and that wasn't a bit of a callback because remember, we were seeing a character doing a puzzle half this season. I don't know how they all fit in place yet, and I'm sure everything's going to be thrown to the wind next episode anyways, but what are yours? Is this season shaping up the way you thought it would? Leave all your thoughts below and hit that like and subscribe button while you're down there, and until next time, keep on shining.